Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about importing. And there are actually three different ways that you can import audio, video, and imagery into the Blender program. The first way is to use your operating system file browser. Here I'm using the Nautilus file browser that's part of Ubuntu, but you may be using Windows Explorer or you may be using the Finder for Mac OS. It's pretty straightforward. You find the video file that you wanna import you drag it and you drop it anywhere over this sequencer area. And when I drop it, you will notice that it will start at the location of this blue line, which we call the playhead, and it will split the audio and the video onto their own channels. And it puts it on channel one and two, which are the lowest channels available. So let's actually select these. I'm going to uh, hold my shift button and I'm going to left click until they're both highlighted and I'm gonna hit my delete button and erase. So that's the way that we do it with the operating system file browser. Let's now look and see what the advantages of using the built-in Blender file browser editor that we set up when we, when we set up all of our startup defaults. So I'm in my uh, base directory for all of my media and you can see that it is filtering out only the things that I select in this filter drop down right here. So I want to be able to see folders, images, movies, and sounds. So it's only showing those specific files. But next to that, we have another drop down, which allows us to view our files in a similar uh, way that we would see in our operating system file browser. We can select between a list view, um, horizontal or vertical, or we can do thumbnails of different sizes. And I always like to keep mine tiny. But the feature here that is really unique, I think, is the recursions dropdown, which by default is set to none. But you can see on my desktop, I have folders. So I have this one folder, for example. And if I go inside the one folder, I have a video file, and I have another folder called two. And I go in there, and I have a video file in there, and I have a, a folder three. As you can see, I have three nested folders that each have videos in them. So let's actually hit this uh, up a directory button, parent directory button, keep hitting it till I get back to my base directory, which is my desktop. I wanna make it so that it shows any files that are compatible with my selected files here, which would be folders, images, movies, or sounds. I want it to show them all next to each other. So what I can do is I can say, show me everything that is three levels down. It's gonna go three levels deeper than my base folder, which is my desktop. As you can see, it's looking within the one folder, the two folder, you can see it says two is within one. And it's looking within the three folder. You can see here it says three is within two, is it within one. But it shows them all next to each other. It's also showing images because I have selected to view images as well as movies. So it's showing uh, image sequences that I have in one of my folders. Let's now return that back to just show uh, the base directory. So I can do basically what I would do with my operating system file browser, which is to select the file. You wanna click it from the center of the image and you wanna drag it and you can see it says add movie strip and drop it anywhere over your sequencer area. And when you do, just like with the operating system file browser, it will start it at the location of the playhead. So the one thing that you can't do in here is you cannot do multi uh, import. So I can't just select two video files and drag and drop them in, but it is possible to do it if you use the third way of importing into Blender. So I'm gonna delete these two imported uh, audio and video strips. I'm gonna to go to the sequence editor menu. At the top we have a add menu, we wanna click on that. And you'll see inside the add menu that we have movie, sound, and image or sequence. And we can go to movie and you can see that it's showing the same thing that I'm seeing over here, but we have additional buttons available to us or options. So you'll notice that you have these two drop downs that are available over here, they're available here too. So we can filter to see what we want. We can show recursions and stuff like that. But we also have a gear button, which basically 
lets us change the default settings. And it also shows us what's happening without, uh, without any additional effort when we drag and drop something from over here. It's using these default settings. So this lets us actually turn default settings on and off or to turn different features on and off. So for example, if I wanted to import a video but I didn't want the sound to be imported, I can, I can unselect that and it will just import the video stream and ignore the sound. And you'll notice that it looks for the frame rate of a video when you import it. Now, when you drag and drop something in from the uh, file browser that's built into our layout, it's going to take the frame rate and set it based on whatever frame rate it collects from the metadata in the file. Uh, only on the first file import, though. So every file that you add after, it's going to ignore the frame rate uh, setting. So you can see these are the default options that are being used, but we can turn them on and off. So I'm going to close that by hitting the gear again. But let's see what happens when we select two video files here and we hit the add movie strip button now i'm going to zoom out and the home button on your keyboard is going to be a very very useful shortcut it's the zoom out button we hold our mouse cursor over the sequencer area and we hit the home key and it zooms out to show all of the strips that have been imported and you can see what happened was it imported two different movies into the sequencer. It, uh, it, we have Elephant's Dream and we have Tears of Steel, and it put them right after each other. Now, this is the only way that you can import multiple files with one click uh, or all at the same exact time. You can't do it from, uh, from drag and drop from any of the file browsers, only using the add menu feature. So you can do that with movie sound and image sequence. And I want to show you guys, actually, I'm going to delete all of these by hit, selecting, holding shift and selecting all of them, hitting delete. Okay. And I'm going to go to add and image sequence. So it's basically the same thing. Um, I have a sequence of frames that I rendered out. So each of these pictures that I have here is one frame of the video Elephant Stream. And I'm going to show you how we can select all of these. I can just toggle select all by holding my mouse cursor over this area. And that will select all. If you, if you toggle it or if you click off, it will, it will select all or deselect all. And I hit Add Image Strip. And I'm going to hit my Home key again over here. And you'll notice that what it did was it actually imported all of those images into one image strip and I'm hitting my play button which is the space bar or you can hit this little button down here to play and you can see that it's actually playing a series of images one after another so it imported everything all together in sequence so that's actually probably where you're gonna really need to use uh, multi-select import more uh, it's <laughs> when you're importing tons of uh, images into a image strip but we're going to talk about that further in, uh, in a future video. So those are the three different ways that you can import. Just as a review, we can use our operating system file browser to drag and drop. We can use the layout uh, file browser editor, which lets us filter or see things, um, uh, see recursive directories all in one place. And we can import one at a time from there. Or we can go to the sequencer add menu and we can select movie sound or image sequence and we can do multiple imports all at once. So that's all I want to talk about today. I'll see you guys in the next video.